Oliver Hibbs here make just the one change. Derek Anderson is ill and Kevin McGowan comes in. Motherwell boss Alec McLeish sends out this side, hoping to end a run which has seen his club pick up just one point out of the last 15. Paul Wright is in fine form at present and will be a big threat to Motherwell. His goal against Hoops is still the talk of the town. And Tommy Coyne will be hoping his injury problems are behind him and that his partnership with Dougie Arnott will get Motherwell out of trouble in the weeks ahead. The referee is Andrew Waddle from Edinburgh. Well, in the last meeting of the clubs here in March, Motherwell won a vital match 1-0 in their fight against relegation. Paul Lambert, now with Borussia Dortmund, got the goal with a penalty. It's another vital day for Motherwell. Uh, they're joint second bottom with Kilmarnock and have played a game more. And obviously, it's a very important day for the home side also. But uh, both managers are quite confident that uh, their sides will be clear of these problems uh, come next May. Coins well forward, but uh, the cover is there for uh, Bomanic through Kevin McGowan. Uh, Sean McSkimming playing against his old club uh, this afternoon. Here he is again. He won that uh, initial challenge. It's Jamie Dolan. Well, no real test there for Colin Meldrum from uh, Jamie Dolan's shot. Through by Philibin. There's no flag. A real chance on here for Motherwell. It's Andy Roddy sending it in. Tommy Coyne. Motherwell take the lead. Eight minutes gone here at Rugby Park. The perfect start for Alec McLeish's man. Tommy Coyne finishes it off. The long ball was played through by Philibin. Kilmarnock defenders were looking for a flag, it didn't go up, Andy Roddy come through, had a little look up here and sent in the perfect ball for Tommy Coyne, and he doesn't miss those. Kilmarnock nil, Motherwell one. It's McCart in the head of uh, Brown, still a bit of work to be done here by the Motherwell defence. Chance on for them there. And they've got to settle up for the corner kick. The Motherwell defence were never comfortable here. Couldn't get it away properly. And the ball was played right across the face of goal, but uh, no takers. And uh, Motherwell managed to scramble it away. And it comes for a free kick by the Kilmarnock fans. And uh, the assistant referee has signalled to Andrew Waddell. Free kick is awarded now to Kilmarnock, just in line with the penalty area. Kilmarnock now turning the screw a bit. That's a dangerous ball. Off the top of the bar from Tom Brown, who is so good in the air for such a little fellow. So unlucky here. It was a great ball, causing the defence and the goalkeeper all kinds of problems. How often do you see Tom Brown managing to spring up like this, make a good contact? Played off by Brown. Well, the effort from John Henry going wide of target, but again, Kilmarnock applying some pressure, glancing header, wide of goal. Now it's Gus McPherson. Touch from McIntyre. Well, uh, <laughs> referee just got out of the way in time. It's another slight ball, though, that's given away by Meldrum to Andy Roddy, who laid on that opening goal. The offside flag has gone up. It was Tommy Coyne on the far side. Again, it was a bit of slackness that uh, gave possession to Motherwell. Good clearance by Meldrum to Roddy, but the flag had gone up by this stage. I just wonder if the uh, main stand assistant referee is going to be under a bit of pressure now for the remainder of this game. 
Yeah, it's ending towards uh, Brown. It's uh, way by McSkinney. This is right for Kilmarnock. Almost a good ball, trying to knock it inside Ryan Martin. And it's a free kick against McSkimming. No doubt about that one. So another chance for Kilmarnock to get themselves on level terms. Well, that ball deflected. And uh, Scott Howey had to keep a close watch on it. It was sent in there by Dylan Kerr. It was an awkward one. Kerr with the throw. Here's again. Monarch's ball. Got a hurry to get on with things. It's laid off by Finlay. In by McIntyre, but uh, once again it's given away to Andy Roddy, the man who laid on Motherwell's goal. And they're putting players forward here on Motherwell. Sean McSkimming's away down the left-hand side. Here he is, good running by him. McSkimming sends it in! <laughs> Terrific such forward there by Motherwell. And it really was... Good saving tackle the other end. And McGowan, I think, getting in there with Coyne. Splendid play that. It really was. The ball given away initially, but uh, Roddy pushed forward, held the ball up, waited for McSkimming to go on his run, sent through the perfect ball. He played it into the far post, and McGowan was there for Kilmarnock, just ahead of Tommy Coyne. Way by McPherson. Touch from Henry. In steps Martin from Motherwell. Arnott's away ahead of him, good running by Dougie Arnott! And a good save by Colin Meldrum, excellent running that by Dougie Arnott as Brian Martin surfs forward, Arnott began his run. Martin slid it through to him, but uh, Colin Meldrum came to beat him. Good blocking save. And he played a minute of stoppage time, this is McKee for Kilmarnock. And by McPherson, oh, a high boot there. But the referee's allowing play to go on. It's uh, Jimmy Dolan who's on the ground. He's taken a knock to the head. I think he was caught uh, by the boot of Tom Brown. The referee really should stop the match here. He's having another look over at the Motherwell player who's still on the ground. Still play continues. And there's a chance on for Motherwell. But the whistle's gone. Well, the Motherwell players uh, now are angry with the referee. He allowed Kilmarnock to play on there for quite a while. Then the ball broke for Tommy Coyne, and as he was running through in goal, the whistle sounded, and uh, the Motherwell players are reacting angrily. I really cannot understand why Andrew Waddle allowed play to go on so long. Referees have clear instructions. If there is a head knock at all, they must stop the game. And then the minute Motherwell had an advantage, he halted the play. moment of real controversy here at uh, Rugby Park. Certainly he was caught by the Kilmarnock player's boot. His head went uh, down low, there's no doubt about that. But the minute the contact was made, the referee really should have stepped in and stopped things. And uh, much of the anger of Mullable is when the advantage was going their way. The whistle sounded. The referee checks his watch now. The ball is played back to Scott Howey. But uh, this will certainly be a talking point over the weekend. It's uh, Dolan challenging. Well, the whistle sounds after five minutes of stoppage time. There's a man who made all the difference after eight minutes of the game. And it was a long ball played from Philibin on the right-hand side, out to Roddy on the left. He surged forward, played it in towards Coyne, who finished off in style. At Rugby Park, it's Kilmarnock 0, Motherwell 1.
number 15 there. Alec Burns has come on for Dougie Arnott in the Motherwell side. Remember that uh, Arnott took a hefty knock in that uh, first half. So Alec Burns signed uh, five years ago from Shots One Accord. Player who can play through the middle or in the wide positions. Will be a fresh threat to this Kilmarnock defence. And uh, during the long absences of uh, Tommy Coyne over the last couple of years, uh, he's come in and uh, made his contribution to the Motherwell cause. This is Dylan Kerr. hard this afternoon they know what's at stake and uh, with Kilmarnock having a game in hand over them we've got to leave here with full points and uh, here's Alec Burns it's Tommy Coyne Roddy goes in a run takes the defender with him it's deflected Coyne's effort deflected Meldrum at full stretch and the ball going just beyond goal you can see the decoy run there from Roddy and the ball deflected off Ray Montgomery and not far away in the end well Motherwell made a good start to the first half and it was almost a very good start to the second half for them Davis plays it through, it spins in the air. Well, claims that that's a pass back. And the referee is actually giving it. This will be an indirect free kick. Just six yards from goal. The defender was under a lot of pressure. Well, we saw something like this a couple of years ago at Fir Park in the match between Motherwell and Harps, if memory serves me correctly. There was a lot of controversy about that. This will be an indirect free kick. The entire Kilmarnock wall will have to retreat to the goal line. So more drama here. The referee interpreted that as the defender trying to get the ball back to his goalkeeper. A golden opportunity for Motherwell, and they've taken it! Tries to find a way through. Well, the man pushing forward now. Claims there for use of a hand. So the ball floated away to the far side. It was claims there. The ball came off the defender's arm. And then good finish there by Paul Wright. Teed up by John Henry. The referee has uh, called back the play. There was advantage there to Kilmarna. McIntyre had the ball. Here he is again. Well, the chance is on for McIntyre. Well, he's claiming that uh, Martin got a touch to that as he lined up for the shot. Good play by him here. Opening up the opportunity.
McGowan for Kilmarnock. He digs in well there. This is Kerr. Oh, that's given away to Tommy Coyne. Here's Coyne again. Good play by Motherwell. Great goal. Superb goal by Motherwell and Tommy Coyne. Kilmarnock 1, Motherwell 3, 58 minutes gone, that was superb play as Motherwell broke forward. Billy Davis linking so well with Tommy Coyne. And a great finish. Coyne gets his second goal of the match. It's Motherwell's third. A lovely ball through there by Billy Davis. It was Coyne who gave the ball to Davis in the first place. He kept his run going, took the return from the midfielder and slammed it away. Superb piece of play. Certainly Motherwell over the piece have been the better side. So Motherwell making a change. And uh, Davis who helped set up that goal goes off and on comes the new man. Johnny Lettman, the Finnish midfielder, who's uh, with Motherwell in trial. Sturdy midfield player, according to Alex McLeish. And here's a first touch from him. Well, that might have been the perfect debut. Running onto the ball, but uh, well wide. Giving chase. And again, Kerr's in trouble. Sintov's coin. And Kermonic scrambling away through Gus McPherson. But uh, Alec Burns did ever so well there, pressuring the fullback. Getting away from him despite his attentions. It fell just beyond uh, Tommy Coyne. And uh, McPherson was there to send it behind for the corner through Motherwell. deceived everyone it was Eddie May who fired it in right, right, right. There, the mother will substitute it's Burns again here's Dolan Lettonen Burns and so unlucky from uh, Tommy Coyne almost getting the hat trick So Lipton found Burns, the early ball from him, and the touch from Tommy Coyne, and inches away in the end, the ladies hat trick. Right, plays it through now. Picked up by Brown. Well, not a bad effort. Right at the keeper. Uh, they fit in here, get a bit of power into the shot, but uh, never really worried Scott Howie. So Motherwell just sitting in, and waiting to hit on the break. And you can see how far back Paul Wright is having to come for possession. And he's fouled yet again. Free kick. McIntyre's in a hurry to get on with things. This is good play by McIntyre. They just tried to clip it over Scott Howey. The Marek player did extremely well. The free kick was quickly taken. He was bearing in in goal. He could have had a, a real pot there, but he tried to clip it over the goalkeeper. This is Kerr. Right's in there, battling down, he goes, that's a penalty. Paul Wright fouled inside the area, Andrew Waddle points towards the spot. 
and have four minutes left. There might be a grandstand finish yet. So it will be Paul Wright himself to take this one. He already got his side back into the game with his earlier goal. If he can put this one away, Motherwell might still have a bit of work to do. It's Paul Wright! Come on at two. Motherwell three. About three minutes left. He trolls the ball into the back of the net. So some anxious moments coming up for Alec McLeish and Andy Watson. Giving the ball away again, and this time and uh, Lee McCullough. No care. Comes away possession. Good through by Fullerbin. Play goes on. A bit of a tussle there involving Tommy Coyne and uh, McGann. Well, yeah, Andy Roddy had. Uh, himself into a reasonable position but uh, sent it high over the target stepping away from Ray Montgomery played a minute of stoppage time here at Rugby Park it's another mistake oh that's a great goal it's Tommy Coyne getting his hat trick a mistake there by Ray Montgomery and Tommy Coyne floated the ball over Colin Meldrum for a superb goal for Monarch 2 Motherwell 4 and well might those Motherwell players celebrate but uh, Colmanic really got himself into awful trouble here a mistake by Montgomery, and there was Tommy Coyne reacting immediately, flipping the ball over the goalkeeper. For his hat trick, he celebrates as well he might. Tommy Coyne is back. Ray Montgomery, well, he'll be more than disappointed with himself. That really does push it beyond any reasonable doubt. We've played almost two minutes of stoppage time. The whistle sounds. Well, a dramatic afternoon here at Rugby Park. Three great points for Motherwell, Tommy Coyne and Alec McLeish. And really splendid goals by Coyne. Finishing off in real style in the first half after eight minutes. Philbin played a long ball to Roddy. He moved towards the edge of the penalty area and teed it up for the striker. And then after 58 minutes, another superb goal. Coyne and Billy Davis setting things up and Coyne tucking the ball beyond the goalkeeper and as you saw in stoppage time pouncing in a mistake and lofting the ball over Colin Meldrum the final score here at Rugby Park is Kilmarnock 2, Motherwell 4 Well, where did it go? A controversial afternoon at Rugby Park The views of Charlie and Jerry along with more Premier highlights and First Division action after this short break We'll be back in just a couple of minutes from now. Welcome back. Well, six goals, as you saw at Rugby Park. Uh, some strange decisions. Jerry, what did you make of it all? Well, it was certainly an exciting afternoon, and uh, I suppose, you know, like the old Firm game the other night, certainly exciting, but uh, the standard is not there. We know that, we've said it so many times this season. But uh, there's no doubt Motherwell were more up for this game. Two committed sides, but uh, I think Alec McLeish would be delighted, not just with the points, which were important to him, but the performance he got out of his players. And certainly the performance of Tommy Coyne, Charlie. He yep. got Motherwell off to a great start with the opening goal. Was, was Roddy offside, or, or was it, should have that have stood? So. No, I, I thought it was a good pass. It started from Philip, and you see that now. We don't really see it because it's travelled 40 yards. But McGowan has really played him on. He's unselfish, and Tommy Coyne doesn't miss then. And that got them off to a great start, Jerry, didn't it? Yep. Uh, same uh, assistant referee as was at Parkhead the other night. So, you know, he's been under a, a fair bit of pressure this week. But uh, 
it was well taken and it's great to see Tommy Coyne back. Mm. But again, Alec McLeish, he knows he's got to look at his squad here because uh, Tommy's, what, 34, in fact, uh, 34 last week. Dougie Arnott's 35. Uh, you look through the squad, Billy Davis, John Philbin, 32 years of age, and uh, Alec himself kicking 40, well, uh, 38, in fact. <laughs> he's still in the playing staff, but he knows that uh, he's, he's got to look at things uh, and, and get some fresh players in. Charlie and Jerry, obviously you come in on this too. What about the second goal and what led up to it? Now, how could this be construed as a pass back? Well, it's, there's no way it's a pass back. I mean, the defence is bad enough here because they've let Miller again behind. But he's, he's in two minds here. He's trying to either get it round the post or get it over the bar. So he's completely fluffed it, as you see here. And the keeper has made the right decision as far as I'm concerned. Remember the one at uh, Fir Park and uh, I got involved in a storm of controversy because I, I agreed with the referee in that case. Because I thought then that, uh, I'm not talking about this one here, but the one at, uh, at Fir Park, that Chris McCart tried to play the ball over. It caught in the wind, of course. It mm. a howling gale that day. But it's a difficult one for the referees. It, you can't play the ball back with your foot, obviously. You can head it back, you can send it back with your chest mm. or your thigh, but uh, not with your foot. But that surely wasn't a difficult one for No, I don't think that, that, there's, there's no intent there. There's no intent by the player to send it back to the goalkeeper. And it's a different one. Philibin buried it and then it was 2-0. And Charlie, to be fair, Kilmarnock came back into it. Paul Wright dragged them yeah. back into it. Well, they did. It was really just down to his persistence. I mean, he starts the move, you see, he sweeps it with a nice pass to, to the right. And eventually it starts working for him. But Kilmarnock was so lacking in imagination and ideas all afternoon but this is a clever delay here from Henry lets the defender go to the ground and then he sets it up for right but other than right the man up were really short in, in, in imagination all day long yeah frustrating afternoon for Alec Totten I mean he wanted more all the time from his players Jerry and he didn't get it yeah and you know they, they just come off the back of a very good result having beaten Hibs 4-2 and then that happens mm. so. and Jerry as you rightly described it in, in commentary great interplay between Coyne and Billy Davis to, to make it 3-1 and a great finish from Coyne yeah well I mean Charlie said lack of imagination from Kilmarnock there was certainly imagination involved in, in this goal and uh, Tommy Coyne right in at the start of it again he's so good at bringing other players into the game he's so experienced and uh, just keeps the run going times it perfectly an excellent finish it's also the subtlety that's involved in this. We have, we have two bright players. You see the timing and the weight of the pass from Davis is exceptional there. And Tommy Coyne was just full of running and full of excitement about being back. And he certainly deserved to get that goal. Fabulous goal. But it wasn't over yet, Charlie, because Kilmarnock, as we saw, came back into it. Was it a penalty or did Paul Wright make the most of this? I think he did make the most of it, to be honest. There's a bit of you know, contact, I think. It's eventually Chris McCart, who lashes out here. You know, if he, if he makes contact with the ball, the ball would be shooting out of the park. So I think he does clash with them. It may be a bit soft, but at the same time, Paul Wright's reaction, actually, I think he was surprised he got it. I mean, the game, the game had died uh, at, mm. at that point. You know, Motherwell 3-1 up, and they're sitting in there just hitting the long ball forward. But they, yeah. they were then caught, you know, and yeah. uh, they had to uh, do a bit more work after that. And he cracked in the penalty, and we'll get a new microphone as a result of that. <laughs> uh, it then went to 4-2, Jerry, uh, and again Coyne, but w what was Montgomery thinking about? Where yeah, was well, he? You know, a lot of mistakes in this game yesterday. But again, it shows the experience, the awareness. Look, back to goal, doesn't even look up. Yeah. Perfect finish again. You know, it's just one of those days, everything he touched went right for mm -hmm. him. It's and uh, he is such a good player, Tommy Coyne. It's a split second though, isn't it, Jerry? The balls came through, he knows exactly where the goalkeeper is. He just had a sudden glance and he's lofted in. You know Tommy Coyne well, and I know, I know you rate him highly, Charlie. Hard, yes. In general terms, what about his play throughout the afternoon? I mean, we can see here, yeah. he put so much effort into this match. Well, before the game, he was saying that he's not quite match fit, and suddenly he's popped up with a hat-trick, and he's only had two starts. There's the imagination, he's got the link-up. He makes Mullerville tick, he really makes him play, because he's bright, he's got a lot of subtlety in his game, and he's going to get in and about, he's going to get chances at the end of it. I mean, this is typical of him. Bring in decoy run, and then he's got the quality of time bend it round. Mm. But he was great in full of imagination all day long. And thank goodness for him yesterday, Jerry. So many plus points in this game yep. from him. Another good touch there. Again, he was unlucky. And also, I think, unlucky in his time with Celtic. He had problems with the managers that were there at the time. But there's never been any doubt about his quality. And you look at the goals he scored for the other clubs he was at, too. Yep. What about some of the refereeing decisions? Now, we're going to see this one here involving Dolan. Uh, Jerry, talk... Talk us through it. I mean, what well, is I can quite here? believe this because the referee's right there. You see the, the player lying in the deck. Now, this went on and on and on. We're cut back in it a bit here. 
Certainly Dolan went in a bit low, but uh, the referee's got a perfect view of things. He must know it's a knock to the head. He lets it go on and on and on. And then mother will get possession and he blows the whistle. <laughs> and no wonder the Motherwell players were, were furious. I mean, Andrew Waddle, I think, uh, does like the cameras and a bit of controversy, but uh, this is certainly one for his video collection. And Kelly fans, obviously, not happy at some of the things that went on as well as Motherwell fans, Terry. Well, that's true. Mainly the pass-back incident. I mean, he really, that really killed Kilmarnock in a way. Although they got back in on two occasions, that really killed them. Kilmarnock were really kind of lacking in quality all day long yesterday, and the pressure's immense now at Kilmarnock. Jerry, briefly, will this help Motherwell turn the corner? Well, you know, they made a good, uh, a good start to the season and they threw it away. What it was at one point out of 15, uh, the last 15. So that's a big result for them because, you know, they played a game more than Kilmarnock. OK, Charlie, Jerry, thanks.